Welcome. In this review, we will focus on calculations that arise when a weak base is titrated with a strong acid. It is strongly recommended that the student first review the previous lessons on the basics of buffer solutions and calculations that arise when a weak acid is titrated with a strong base. So let's begin with a simple titration where given amounts of a strong acid, hydrochloric acid, are added to a weak base, ammonia, and we are asked to calculate the final pH after each addition. It may help to first diagram the problem to assure you know what is given and what is being asked. So let's calculate the pH before any acid is added. The first step is to write out the weak base equilibrium, and it's a good idea to always write the Kb over the equilibrium arrows. It is worth mentioning that the small Kb value indicates the base is weak. Remember that understanding base strength is simply examining the stability of the conjugate acid. The more stable the conjugate acid, the stronger the base. So now let's also include the initial concentration of base and the change in concentrations when at equilibrium. Now we can substitute the equilibrium concentrations into the expression for Kb. The denominator can be simplified employing the 5% rule, which was discussed in detail in previous reviews to afford a much easier calculation. X, the hydroxide concentration, is now easily calculated. But let's check the 5% rule assumption. Was the amount of hydroxide formed less than 5% of the initial concentration of weak base? Yes, just a little more than 1%. Starting with our definition of Kw, followed by a rearrangement for the proton calculation, allows us to convert the hydroxide ion concentration to the proton concentration, which affords the initial pH of our solution. Note the log significant figure rule. When taking the log of a number with three sig figs, one must report three sig figs after the decimal point. Now let's calculate the final pH of the solution after 25.12 milliliters of hydrochloric acid is added. The protons added are written as a reactant here, combining with the weak base to afford additional conjugate acid and lower the concentration of initial weak base. We write down the quantity and molarity of acid added directly under the species so we can stay organized. Then convert given quantities to millimoles. The millimoles of acid will react completely with the millimoles of weak base to afford 2.718 millimoles of conjugate acid, leaving 4.882 millimole of weak base per 75.12 milliliter total volume, which are now easily converted back to molarity. At this point, our pre-equilibrium calculations are complete and we are now ready to look at our equilibrium concentrations after indicating expected change. Our expected equilibrium concentrations are placed into the expression for Kb. The denominator and numerator are simplified due to the 5% rule. The concentration of hydroxide is calculated, followed by the two steps shown previously to afford the final pH. Alternatively, one could use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve for the final pH, but first the Kb must be converted to a Ka as shown. With Ka in hand and concentrations of weak base and conjugate acid previously calculated, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation gives the same resulting pH of 9.509 in a much easier manner. As demonstrated previously, an even quicker way to solve for the final pH using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is to stop at the step in the pre-equilibrium calculation which affords millimoles of reactants and products initially present, which is obtained after the stoichiometric calculation. Let's review that approach now. Dividing millimoles by the total volume of the solution and then placing those concentration ratios into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation we see that we can cancel out milliliters within both denominators and quickly calculate the final pH. This shortcut demonstrates that we can simply plug quantities of millimoles calculated in the pre-equilibrium step directly into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to even more quickly calculate the final pH as shown. So now let's calculate the pH after 35.12 milliliter of strong acid are added to our aliquot of weak base. Again, hydrochloric acid is written as a reactant here, 
because it will combine with the lone pair of the weak base to afford the conjugate acid of the weak base. Next, let's write down quantities of weak base and acid given directly under the species so we can stay organized, then convert given quantities to millimoles. The 3.8 millimole of protons will react completely with the 7.6 millimole of weak base to afford 3.8 millimole ammonia and 3.8 millimole of conjugate acid ammonium. In previous reviews, we have demonstrated that if you are halfway to the stoichiometric point, then the pH is simply equal to the pKa. However, if you unfortunately did not recall that the pH is equal to the pKa, then one could convert millimoles to molarity utilizing the new total volume to complete the pre-equilibrium calculation. Now we can write the expected change or our expected equilibrium concentrations, then place them into the expression for Kb. The denominator and numerator are simplified due to the 5% rule. The concentration of hydroxide is calculated, followed by conversion to proton concentration, followed by the pH calculation, which is a lot of work. Alternatively, one could use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve for the final pH. But first, the Kb must be converted to a Ka, as shown, with Ka in hand and concentrations of weak base and conjugate acid previously calculated, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation gives the same resulting pH in an easier manner. But it is still easier to simply recall that if you are halfway to the equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa. Again, here we see that millimoles conjugate acid will cancel with millimoles weak base within the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation proving the pH is equal to the pKa. Or, as we have demonstrated earlier in this review, one could directly place the millimoles of base and acid into the Henderson-Hasselbalch, which were calculated within the pre-equilibrium calculation. But even with this approach, the quantities cancel and the pH is simply equal to the pKa. Clearly, this is a much easier problem when one recognizes that the pH is equal to the pKa when halfway to the equivalence point, or another way of stating this is when millimoles weak base equal millimoles conjugate acid. To calculate how many milliliters of acid of known molarity are required to neutralize an aliquot of weak base also of known molarity, it is usually helpful to first write down given quantities directly under each species so that we can stay organized. At the equivalence point, millimoles of weak base will equal millimoles of strong acid required. Thus, we first convert given quantities of weak base to millimoles, which is how many millimoles of acid are required for this neutralization. Rearranging the molarity expression allows us to calculate the milliliters of acid required to complete the titration. To answer the question, what is the pH at the equivalence point, we calculate there are 7.6 millimoles of conjugate acid per volume total, which affords a molarity of 0 0.06321. At this point, the only species in solution is the unstable reactive conjugate acid ammonium, and it will do what it can to stabilize, which means reacting with water to convert back to ammonia and in the process generate an increase in proton concentration. However, we need to convert the given Kb to a Ka value as shown for this new equilibrium. With our pre-equilibrium calculations completed, we can now focus on our equilibrium calculation. Our expected equilibrium concentrations are placed into the expression for Ka. The denominator is simplified due to the 5% rule. The concentration of protons is calculated, finally followed by a pH calculation. At this point, please take a moment and look over how all the sig fig rules within these calculations were followed. So now let's look at a calculation when more than 70.24 milliliters of the 0 0.1082 molar hydrochloric acid is added, say 82.26 milliliters. We first convert both quantities to millimoles as shown, followed by the stoichiometric calculation involving acid and weak base, which will afford 1.301 millimole of excess protons 
and 7.6 millimole of conjugate acid. Dividing the millimole of acid by the new total volume gives the final molarity of acid. The 7.6 millimoles of ammonium will produce some protons, but this amount will be negligible when compared to the protons produced by the acid present on the reactant side of the equation. At this point, the final pH to this problem can be easily calculated.